The Agikuyu traditionally held a strong belief in Gaii, a single, all-powerful god. This monotheistic concept was central to their pre-Christian religion. Agikuyu monotheism was inclusive and accepting of other religions. They viewed other forms of worship as different paths to the same god, similar to their coexistence with the monotheistic Maasai and Akamba. This openness allowed the Agikuyu to embrace Christianity without feeling contradictions with their existing beliefs. They saw it as another way to connect with Ngai and other monotheistic communities. Christianity found fertile ground among the Agikuyu due to their existing monotheistic framework. They saw Ngai in Christian teachings as the same divine being they worshipped before. The missionaries and colonialists, however, were hesitant to accept the Agikuyu's monotheism and other beliefs, fearing conflicts with their own interpretations of Christianity. In essence, the Agikuyu's strong monotheistic foundation and their tolerant outlook on religion paved the way for their acceptance of Christianity. However, it's important to note the differing perspectives between the Agikuyu and the colonizers and missionaries on how Christian beliefs should be interpreted and practiced. This video will go through some of the observations that the missionaries had written articles about in newspapers and also books as they were converting and evangelizing the Agikuyu. Marian Scott Stevenson, 1871-1930, was a Scottish missionary with the Church of Scotland Mission in British East Africa, Kenya, from 1907 until 1929. Stevenson worked at first for the Church's Kikuyu Mission at Thogoto, then from 1912 for its mission at Tumutumu in Karetina, set up by Rev. Henry Scott and Dr. John Arthur in 1908. She established and ran a girls' school, which became Tumu Tumu Girls High School. She is the one who coined the term female genital mutilation. In her article, A Harvest Thanksgiving, Mrs. Scott observed the following in 1910. The whole countryside, it seemed, came to offer thanks. Except for a very small minority, the whole of these people, who are frankly heathen, and yet openly acknowledging an unseen power. They respond to join in the Thanksgiving festival, because they think the missionaries seem to know more about this unseen power than they do, and that probably this god whom the white people worship is one and the same as their nebulous being called Ngai. He is a being who needs to be propitiated by sacrifice, and his place is a bad place where it is cold and uncomfortable. Arthur Raphael Barlow, Church of Scotland missionary and linguist, was born in Edinburgh in 1888. He was the nephew of David Clement Raphael Scott, the Church of Scotland missionary in Malawi and Kenya. In 1903, at the age of 17, Barlow joined his uncle at Scott's mission at Kikuyu, British East Africa, Kenya. His interest in and grasp of the Kikuyu language and dialects meant he was often employed as a translator and his intimate knowledge of the Kikuyu people made him a trusted counselor. He was a good friend of Jomo Kenyatta when both were young. He observed apprehensively in his article A Sacrifice for Rain that The Kikuyu have quite a wonderful system of sacrifices, perhaps almost unique among the tribes of East Africa. Other Bantu tribes have their sacrifices to the departed spirits, and to God for rain and other necessities, and in times of great calamity, but I hardly think that many other tribes exist into the daily life whose people the sacrificial system enters to so great an extent as it does in the case of the Kikuyu people. There is a distinct difference between the sacrifices to God and those to the spirits showing that the Kikuyu's idea of the deity is not so vague and so confused with that of the spirits of the departed as it has been supposed to be the case of many other tribes. Charles William Hubley was a pioneering British colonial administrator in Kenya. He served the colonial service in Kenya from 1894 until his retirement in 1921. He undertook a general tour of the whole of the Central African Lake region between the years 1895 to 1896. 
He first arrived at Mumias in February 1895, where he established a British administration station. In 1896, he became the first European to circumambulate Mount Elgon and the same year he arrived in the Kano Plains or Kisumu area. He oversaw a number of punitive expeditions between the years 1894 to 1908 which were carried out to pacify hostile natives. Mr. Hubley writing in 1922 observed the following about a Gikui religion. The religious beliefs of the tribes of Kikuyu and Ukamba generally consists of a rudimentary conception of a high god, corresponding more or less to the old Hebrew concept of Jehovah. To the bulk of the peasantry this idea is naturally very vague and practically subconscious. The belief in ancestral spirits is the predominating spiritual factor in the minds of the great majority of the people. Although some missionaries accepted the fact that the Agikuyu believed in a monotheistic deity, they were apprehensive in accepting the fact that the Agikuyu Ngaii was the same as the Christian God. As far as they were concerned the Agikuyu Ngaii religion and culture were paganistic and developed and needed to be replaced by Christian God religion and culture. There is enough evidence to argue that the missionaries believed that the Agikuyu and, indeed, the Africans were generally groping in the dark waiting for the full revelation in Jesus Christ. To them African traditional religious beliefs and practices were A preparation for the gospel This view is still held today and has influenced some African Christians. As Professor Mbiti has put it, Christianity should be presented as the fulfillment of that after which, in all its richness, African religiosity has cropped. Thus the positive evaluation of the Agikuyu religion was used to win the Agikuyu to Christianity. But such an evaluation can only be seen on the negative background in which the missionaries viewed the Agikuyu religion. As Kibicho has objectively observed, all positive evaluations of the Agiku religion were seen in the sense of mere potentiality, and the European saw himself as the agent sent by God to interpret this potentiality for the African and to assist and guide it to what he, the European, understood to be its divinely appointed end, both culturally, religiously, and politically. The negative evaluation of the Agikuyu religion was in many cases exaggerated in order to justify the urgency to convert the Agikuyu to Christianity. By so doing, this would accelerate the Agikuyu realization that after all they were groping in the dark and their beliefs could be easily replaced after the good news had been preached to them. One such negative evaluation was expressed by Marion Scott Stevenson of the Church of Scotland Mission. Shortly after her arrival in 1907, she observed that when the message of Christ came to the Agikuyu, it came with force to the receptive youth of a people steeped in animistic beliefs, where fear was the foundation of their religion. The ramifications of their tribal thahu, taboo, had been taught to them during the rites, also some glimmering of their unseen world peopled with ancestral spirits and a vague concept of God, all of whom had to be propitiated by sacrifices lest evil befall the village or the individual or his belongings. This is also another missionary called Thomas Booth. We will first start with a bit of background to get to know him a little. Canon Thomas Francis Cecil Booth was a missionary in Kenya for 20 years. He was Archdeacon of Mombasa from 1944 to 1949. He spoke Kikuyu, then worked in Kikuyu territory for two years. He was Africa Secretary to the Church Missionary Society for many years. He was sent by the British government to Kenya to assist with dealing with the Mau Mau problem. He subsequently wrote a book entitled, Kikuyu Conflict. The Agikuyu idea of God is a curious mixture of the personal and impersonal. He is Ngai Ifafa or, Father, God, and yet they use a neuter form, Ngai ni nene, the God, is great, Ngai ni nguru, the God, it is powerful, and will normally use the personal prefix, mu, only if they have come under the Christian influence. The missionary Balo also expressed a similar view. 
While all other Christian attributes of God are found in a Gikyun Gai, there is lack of revelation. There is no clear and definite revelation embodied in a Gikyu tradition and the communications claimed to be received from Ngai by a Gikyu prophets or mediums are of doubtful authenticity and lacking in religious purpose. It is quite clear that the missionaries were convinced that the Agikuyu hardly knew who they worshipped, and if they knew, it was only a yearning, a feeling that there was a supernatural power whom they vaguely called Ngai. Although the missionaries used the term Ngai in the Bible translation, they only adopted the term but the content had to be different. The content had to be sought in the Bible, the Agikuyu had to be summoned to come to Ngai. Songs were composed to specifically call the Agikuyu Tungai. Another verse goes on. These hymns imply among other things that the Agikuyu had no god before Christianity and that any Mughikuyu who heeded the Christian call had to make a total break from the Agikuyu religion and culture. It became a heresy to practice the traditional beliefs and rites. Such practices came to be known as things of the devil, Maundo Mangoma, as opposed to things of God, Maundo Mangai. This meant that things of the devil included anything associated with the Agiku religion and culture while things of God included anything Western. The missionaries demanded from their converts to make a total break from their religion and culture. The break was so complete that any backsliding was referred to as going back to the things of the Agikuyu or Bushokarera Mondo Ma Obikuyu. The demand to abandon Agikuyu religion and culture can be seen from the view held by the missionaries that the Agikuyu possessed no moral conscience. These are Palo's comments regarding Agikuyu morality. Filippo Palo, February 8, 1873 to November 4, 1948, was an Italian Catholic prelate who was the vicar apostolic emeritus of Kenya, Archdiocese of Nyeri, Kenya, and Bishop Titular of Moronia. He was also Superior General of the Consolata Missionaries, IMC. Born in Caromagna Piemonte, Piedmont, he was ordained a priest in the Consolata Missionaries on August 10, 1895, aged 22. On July 15, 1909, aged 36, he was appointed as Vicar Apostolic of Kenya and Bishop Titular of Moronia. On October 23, 1909, he was ordained as Bishop Titular of Moronia. He was consecrated by Agostino Cardinal Richelmi. On November 18, 1925, aged 52, he resigned as Vicar Apostolic of Kenya. On February 16, 1926, he was named as the Superior General of Consolata Missionaries. On January 11, 1929, almost 56 years old, he also resigned from that post also. How could morals be found among these people, who in their age-long abandonment have become so corrupt as to raise practices openly immoral to be a social institution? Balo also commented on Agikuyu morality. Agikuyu have no obligation to love and help all men as taught by Christ. They are self-seeking and self-loving. No self-denial and self-sacrifice is found among them. They have no compassion over the blind and the dumb and crippled. They fear death making them to throw the dead in the bush. They are slaves to superstitious fear or death, Dorahu or taboo, urogi or witchcraft, evil eye, etc. They have no philosophy of life yet formulated. They are ignorant of purpose of life, no explanation of birth, life, toil, disease, sorrow, death, etc. 
so their view of life is limited to earthly existence, have no thought of future reward and punishment and the resurrection. Since the Agikuyu did not possess a moral conscience, so argued the missionaries, they were an immoral and promiscuous people. This could be observed in their dances and their whole way of life. The following is a quotation from a missionary called Margaret Hooper. We will first start with a bit of background of Mrs. Hooper before proceeding with the article that she had written. Margaret Cicely Winterbotham, 1891-1982, was a member of a prominent Cheltenham family, who married a clergyman called Reverend Handley Douglas Hooper and accompanied him as a missionary to Kenya. Their base was the station at Kahuhia that Handley's father had developed. Handley served as an officer in the Kenyan Mission Volunteers during the First World War and became the missionary in charge of a native central school in Kikuyu under the Church Missionary Society. Margaret Hooper opened a girls' boarding school. The following quotation from Margaret Hooper's article reflects this biased view. Describing the nature of an Agikuyu girl in relationship to the dances, Hooper wrote that the primary aim of these dances was to cultivate a body capable of rousing and holding a man's passions. The dances nearly all tend educationally to this, the lives of those around her proclaim this. The body has been trained to use what we should term suggestive actions, and the mind has been dulled and clouded with evil thought. Evil knowledge is everywhere. The dances end in immoralities. Their whole posturing and rhythmic movement tend in that direction, all the forces of sexual passion have been let loose in the young girl, and quite uncontrolled and fearfully to the difficult life of the adolescent. For Mrs. Hooper and other missionaries like her, the Agiku dances and songs were a source of sexual promiscuity and had to be prohibited in schools and churches. The religious interpretation of the Agikuyu cultural traditions and practices clearly indicate a subconscious effort by the missionaries to equate Christianity with Western culture. This was well expressed clearly in the semi-jubilee book of the Church of Scotland. The words of the songs accompanying some of the dances are offensive to the European sense of decency and morals, and such dances act as an incentive to immorality, judged by civilized standards. In a way the missionaries do not seem to have had any conflict in equating Christianity with Western culture. In fact, it appears from the above quotations that everything Western was godly while everything Gikuyu was paganistic. This meant that the missionaries could justify the declaration of a total war against paganism, a war that continues even today. With this view in mind, they could justly interpret any protest movement among the Agikuyu as a struggle between the forces of paganism or darkness and the forces of the light. Thus another missionary called Dr. Blixley observed this struggle during the Mau Mau Revolution. Kikuyu land, as has every heathen domain, has been dominated by the Prince of Darkness for past ages. The flooding of the district with the light of the gospel has revealed the hidden things of darkness, the character and source of every evil tribal customs. The powers of darkness have retaliated in proportion to the penetration of the gospel light. This dualistic interpretation of the Agikuyu view of reality led to a radical replacement of the Agikuyu god, religion, and culture. It meant those who accepted Christianity had to be radically and ruthlessly uprooted from the Agikuyu world, the world of darkness, and had to unquestionably accept a new world, the world of light, 